Hey friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, and I'm just sitting here on this Sunday afternoon in my very dirty kitchen. <laughs> we live here and I cook a lot, so this is what my kitchen always looks like. So we're going to ignore that mess, and today we're going to talk about bees. So I had done a video in late spring when I picked up our two nooks of bees, and we've had the two beehives set up, and they've been doing great. And I guess I just failed this year to update you guys on how that was going. Things got busy with having the baby, and I had some um, comments and some previous videos asking how the bees were doing. And so this is where I'm going to update you. They're doing well. They're both alive as of now in the end of November. Uh, we obviously didn't harvest any honey from them this year because we want to give them the best chance of survival here in our Ohio winter. And so... I've prepared them as best as I can, and Lord willing, they'll make it through the winter, and next year we'll have a great honey harvest. But um, I did do one tiny little honey harvest. We scraped off some extra comb, and I was able to get just a pint of honey, which was just a nice, delicious treat that we really enjoyed, and it makes us look forward to the future and, and all the things that these bees will bring. We decided to start raising bees because we wanted the pollinators on our property, obviously, and the world needs more bees, <laughs> so why not? It's something that I'd always wanted to do, and of course, I wanted the honey, and I also wanted the beeswax because I make a lot of things like lip balms and salves and beard wax for Adam, all sorts of cosmetics and things using beeswax, and I've always had to purchase it from other local beekeepers. And now I want the opportunity to grow our own. And so through extra comb that we have um, scraped off of the hives, I have some empty honeycomb here that today I'm going to render into some beeswax. And I thought I'd show you that process. Um, so bees typically will create the comb in the frames that you provide for them, but sometimes they get a little messy and they color outside of the lines <laughs> and they will build this comb in odd areas within the hive. And so I kind of have a collection of the scraped off extra pieces of empty comb. And this is what I'm gonna melt down today and render wax from, beeswax, that then I can use either to make candles or to make some of the products I mentioned before. And I don't know if you've ever smelled um, fresh honeycomb, but it is, I mean, I guess if I could give it a word, it would be intoxicating. It's floral, it smells like, uh, flowers and sweet like honey and just fresh it just I don't know it's a beautiful thing so I kind of just want to <laughs> sit here and sniff this and I you, I can tell that I have been sniffing it a little too long because I'm getting <laughs> sinus pressure from all of this pollen that I'm probably sniffing but anyways I've got this little bowl it's not going to provide us a lot of wax but it will uh, provide us with an opportunity to show you how to render this down and I'm new at this so I'm learning right along with you let's get started so there are several different ways that you can render your wax, but what I'm going to use is a double boiler method here. I have this pot that I use for candle making. Um, in the past I've used it for tallow candles and things like that, but this is going to now be my pot for rendering wax in the future. So um, I've got my empty comb here and I'm just going to pour it all into this pot and I'm going to stick it here in this boiling pot of water and that's going to help melt my wax down. I'm just keeping an eye here on my wax as it's beginning to melt down, just making sure that it doesn't look like it's scorching or burning or anything like that. And in the meantime, I'm grabbing a jar like this. I'm going to need to filter this wax after I'm done to get any of the little bits of bee parts and other dirt and things like that that I'm not going to want in my wax. I'm going to have to filter that out. So I just have an old pair of pantyhose that I um, cut off at the, at the foot and I'm just going to place this over my jar like this and create kind of a filter. You could use cheesecloth or any kind of fabric like that that will let the wax go through and hold the, the bits of uh, of dirt behind. So this is what I'm going to use as a filter today. You could use anything. And this really isn't taking that long at all to melt. We're almost there. And I will show you here in a minute. So you can see here it's melting down slowly. And we're not going to get a lot. You saw that bowl was almost full of comb, but when it melts down, it really doesn't turn into much. So 
This will be enough for probably a batch of lip balm or something next spring. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pour uh, this melted wax in here. I ran my first bit of wax through the filter here and then I put the pot back on here because there's still some bits that need to melt and I'm just going to continue to pour this through as I get a little bit of wax. And then we'll just do it until I feel like I'm done. Now I'm just pulling my little pantyhose filter out here and I'm just going to kind of squeeze any excess out. So here is my wax that I've rendered. It's beautiful, but it's solid now because the, the uh, jar was cool. So I'm going to put this back in the boiling water to make this liquefy a little bit, and then I'm going to pour it into some cute little molds. I have these for soap making. They're little butterfly shapes. And I'm going to then pour my liquid wax into these, and that's how I'll store them. And then when I want to make some lip balm or something like that here over winter, I can just grab out a little chunk of this and weigh it out and get whatever I need to make my little batch. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, time to pop our little butterflies out of the mold. Let's see how it turned out. Oh, so cute. Look, a little beeswax butterfly. It smells amazing. So cute. <laughs> So it's obviously not the most abundant harvest of wet beeswax that you've ever seen, but it smells delicious and it will provide us with enough to make a batch of lip balm for the family here in the coming months. And I'm just, it makes me even more excited about next year and the hope that these bees will survive the winter and provide us with even more wax and honey for the family um, in the future. So here's our little pint of honey that we got this year. And we're really going to enjoy this in the coming months. And we're loving having the bees. So after getting over the initial fear and getting stung the first couple times that I, <laughs> that I dealt with the bees, I learned from my mistakes. And now it's, like, it's a really fun process. I enjoy going out every week and kind of checking on them and just making sure that they're thriving here through these months where there isn't food available for them outside. So, um, so yeah. I guess we will have to update you next uh, spring and let you know how the bees did over the winter. And with that, I'm just going to enjoy my little beeswax butterflies. I hope your day is blessed, and we'll talk to you again soon, friends. Bye.